<clears throat> Hello, friends. Due to social distance measures, Mr. Pete has asked me to introduce today's program. So, first of all, my name is Dan. Dan the Lion. I'm a volunteer with the Friends of the Domes. And on today's episode of A Nature Moment with Mr. Pete, we got a fabulous program. Oh, yes. You just wait. Ha! First of all, I have a new segment. This segment is called Too False and So True. Ha ha ha! Yes, I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But we also have the wonderful Mr. Pete, and he will be showing you how to make a rain stick. So hopefully you got those paper towel rolls and some aluminum foil and all the other stuff he told you to get, and we'll get cracking. All right. Welcome to the next episode of A Nature Moment with Mr. Pete. Yeah! Ha ha ha! All right. That's my cue. Hit the elevator button right there. Do. <laughs> Welcome back to a nature moment with Mr. Pete. I'm Dan the Lion, and today we have a new episode, something I like to call Too False, So True. Ha ha ha! Yes. Now, this is a little game. If you haven't noticed, um, your parents or the adult in your house has a lot of weird stuff around in the house. And some of this stuff is really old. <laughs> I'm talking old. <laughs> anyway, what I thought is I would get some of the old stuff in my house and I would see if you can figure out what it is. Ha! Some of this stuff is antiques. Uh, other stuff might be stuff that the adults in your house uh, used in uh, their childhood. So if you see some of that stuff, go ahead and ask them. They might have some really cool stories, like this right here. Huh. Whenever I do this game with you, too false, so true, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you three statements. One of those statements is true, but you have to figure out which one. So get yourself a piece of paper and a pencil or something to write with, and we'll get started. If you need to pause so you can go get that stuff, that's great. Then come right back. First of all, let me pick this up. There you go. Turn that around over there. Let's see. Can you guys see that? Let me see that. There you go. Right there in the camera. All right. It's kind of long. It's I uh, got this uh, this little thing like a lip down here in the back. Yep. Roll my hand over like that. All right. Uh, you see the end here? There's actually a hole in there. Yeah, I can see right through there. Oh my goodness look at that oh wow ah! oh i dropped it sorry i was getting really into that oh, i gotta just i'm gonna give you the three statements so i give you the first one write down an answer give you the second one write down an answer it could be the same as the first or different depending on what you think and on the third one you're gonna do that again give another answer maybe the first is both of them or maybe different <laughs> whatever you think but that's why we're gonna do it all right then i will let you know what it is and then I can tell you a few things about it. Are you ready? Too false, so true. And remember, this is a family game, so you can have help if you have older brothers and sisters or an adult in the house. Help out those young ones, too. Here is your first statement. This could be a medieval finger puppet. You know, like a knight in shiny armor. I mean, think about it. Excuse me, sir. Would you care to joust? Ah! Ha! Ah, that's a creepy little knight thing! Oh my goodness! Hey! Uh, get out of here, man! Ah! Oh! Ah! That kind of freaked me out! Whoa! Oh man! I gotta get over that. Okay. 
That's going to be in my dreams forever. Now, the second thing that it could be is a faucet spigot for a tree. You know, you stick it in there and then it helps get the liquid on it. Because everybody knows there's liquid in trees. I mean, they got to drink water, right? Ha! All right. Now, here's your third statement. The last thing it possibly could be is a medicine dispenser. Yep. Oh, sorry. This big lip thing right here, that would go in your mouth. I mean, I'm sorry, the other end would go in your mouth. And then they pour it like with a spoon or something. And that, that would go in that big lip thing. And then in your mouth and you'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, unless the medicine tastes really good, you know, like cherry flavored or something. Anyway, that's it. Two false, so true. So, how'd you do? Huh? What do you think? You wrote down an answer for number one, number two, and number three. Okay. Now, I'm gonna give you the answer. Spoiler alert! Ah! Yes. <laughs> If you didn't know, it's gonna happen now. Was it the medieval knight? Was it a faucet spigot for a tree? Or was it the medicine dispenser? Yes, it was a faucet spigot for a tree. Well, sort of, yes. Actually, this is called a spile. Remember, spile rhymes with smile. <laughs> and we need a lot of smiles, don't we? All right, so pass those smiles around. The reason the spile makes you smile is this is something they would tap into the tree in like February or March, maybe even January. And it could even be April. It just depends on the process of the, the sap in the tree because this is what they use to collect the sap from a tree so they can boil it down to make maple sugar! Oh yes, I love it! Oh, it's so good! That is one type of a maple sugar or maple sap, maple syrup spile, yes, to get the sap out. All right, they have many different kinds. They used to start off with wood like sumac, and then they went on from there. Maybe before uh, we got this quarantine thing going on, uh, you were able to get over to maybe the Wear Nature Center or another place that has maple sugaring going on and learn all about that. If not, put that on your calendar for next year because hopefully we'll be able to do it then. It's a great process and who doesn't like maple syrup? Yeah! Forget the pancakes. Put it on my ice cream. Yeah! Oh man, I love it. All right. Well, this has been the first episode of Too False, So True. I'm Dan Belion and now we're going to turn it over to Mr. Pete. Ha! See you next time. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, Dan. Welcome back to A Nature Moment with Mr. Pete. Dan was pretty cool, right? So he's one of our volunteers here at uh, Friends of Domes. And we'll be uh, talking to Dan more in the future and maybe to get to know him a little bit more. If you'd like to volunteer, check out our website and on our Bring the, the Domes Home you can check out uh, the video tribute that we gave to all the volunteers. And if you're a volunteer, thank you. And check out that video so you can see all the thank yous from Mitchell Park of the County Parks, as well as the Friends of the Domes. And we really appreciate all your help. So as I promised uh, last week, um, we were to get together and have a few things so we could do something new. So, today, I asked you to get a paper towel tube, and what I thought we'd do today is we would make a rain stick. Yes, rain sticks have been around for a long time, and the interesting thing about rain sticks is they are made usually out of a dried cactus or um, bamboo and they were used in in the past they were used by indigenous people all over the globe so rain sticks were found um, although they do make them in uh, the rainforests of Central America they also find them in the dry desert regions of South and Central America in Africa Asia and Australia those ones are um, primarily made out of bamboo and the ones in the desert regions obviously would be made out of cactus but a lot of people like their sound because it's like the sound of falling rain and 
they make them out of cardboard tubes. Now you can use any kind of cardboard tube. Um, the bigger ones, uh, you just gotta be careful. It's nice to have maybe it a little bit smaller than this, and sometimes maybe a bigger than this, but have fun with it. You can use a tube out of a wrapping paper. Um, sometimes they have like postal tubes or you have a poster tube. So if the mail comes and there's a tube, grab it and you can make it as well. And the whole family can have fun. The purpose of the rain stick is because uh, it sounds like uh, falling rain and in a lot of the indigenous um, regions where it's dry, they would use this basically um, in religious ceremonies uh, to call on the rain that they needed for their crops, their animals, and the people themselves. So they would uh, make these and then they would use them. They'd usually fill them with pebbles or seeds and for the cactus, they would actually put in uh, the thorns from a cactus and put them in kind of in a um, spiral pattern going down. So when the beans trickled down through it, it gave that sound of falling rain. Um, other people also use them for meditation. They also use it for um, music as well, since it is a percussion instrument. All right, so you know a little bit about it now, and let's stop talking. Well, I can't stop talking, but let's get to making some rain. Yeah, doesn't it sound cool? Woo! All right, so you got your paper towel tube. You got your aluminum foil. All right, do you have your paper bag? Okay, we're doing good. Woohoo! Um, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, and I also said you needed like some beans. You can use some rice. And another one of those options is you can experiment with what you put in here. And we'll talk about that in, in just a minute as we get going on here as well. All right, so you got your paper tube. Um, you're going to need some tape. You can use masking tape, or I think I got a little um, invisible tape here, scotch tape. And you need a pair of scissors. Um, make sure that uh, you have the safety scissors or have one of those amazing adults to help you out as well. And friends, this will be fantastic. All right, you also, um, I didn't say this before, um, but if you have some rubber bands, it can make the process a little bit easier. And we'll get going on that. What you want to do is you're going to want to cut a piece of your, um, like a big square out of your paper bag. And I did that previously. So you take your square like this and then take your paper towel tube and you see how it has that nice little circle there. So you can see, you can see that circle right around there. Okay, you're going to take that circle and you're going to place it on your paper like this. And then you're going to get yourself a marker. All right, you're going to make you're just going to go ahead and trace around that circle. So there you have your circle. You can see that. Now, if you have a roll of masking tape, this is really cool because you can actually put that around and you can do one of two things. You can go on the inside, it'll be a little bit smaller of a circle, or you can go on the outside. I'm going to go on the outside. So it's going to be a little bit bigger um, and you want to kind of center so the, the circle you just drew was inside. Now go around your masking tape like this. And if you don't have a masking tape, you can freehand it. I freehanded this one earlier because we're going to cut this out. And this is actually a little bit small. I should have this a little bit wider. It'll be easier for you when, you, um, when we get to the point of using this. Okay, so with that in mind, now you're going to do a second one. So go ahead and make sure that you bring this far enough away from your first circle. Dun, dun, dun. And get that full 360 degrees. Boop, boom. All right, yeah. And there you go. I got my two circles. Okay. Oh, look, it's like eyes. Ah. All right. So, what you're going to do next is um, you're going to go ahead and take your scissors. My kitty decided to come and visit me. <laughs> so, take your scissors and go ahead and you can cut these out. Bum, bum, bum. So you're going to go ahead and cut out both circles. Now, once you have your circles cut out, now you still need your scissors. Make sure you're drawing on one of your scraps of paper as well. Um, but what you can do is you can take a marker. I usually freehand this with the scissors, but for you, I'm going to go ahead and use this. You're going to draw four lines. And I'm going to show you how to draw those lines in just a moment. This is going to end up looking kind of like a ring buoy if you've ever been on a boat 
or anything like that. See how that is? Okay, you're gonna make those four lines and they're basically right across from each other. This one's a little wonky, but um, on my other one, let's see if I can do that. You wanna just draw two lines, one straight across like that right through the circle. It's not gonna matter, boom. Okay, so like X marks the spot. All right, then what you're gonna do next is you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut, but if you did go all the way across, make sure you just cut right up to that inner circle. Okay, don't go into the inner circle. And you're gonna cut that, and you should have four little flaps now. Boom, 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 chip, chip, chip. Once you have your four flaps on your circle, what you can do is you can kind of give them a little, just a little, make sure that they're free of each other. Don't bend them down all the way. But now, we get to start making something. But get yourself some rubber bands, because this is actually really helpful. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, um, my, my paper towel tube, and I'm gonna place this on here like this. Then I'm gonna take one of those, and I'm gonna bend that down. I'll bend the one across from it. Now, if you notice, as we're bending this down, okay, you can actually push this flap underneath here, and then pull that one on top of it like that. You might need one of those amazing adults to help you out with this, but that's the basic idea is to get the flaps underneath as you bring the other one down. So they're kind of tucked in like this. And so that kind of goes all the way around like that. Okay, it might be a little tricky, but I think you can handle it. And with an amazing adult, that will be helpful also. Oh, boing, there goes my, uh, there goes my thing. All right. So we're going to go ahead and push this around as well. All right. And you bring that down so your rubber band goes all the way around and that stays on there like that. Now, the reason I did that is because you're going to have to take your hands away and then get your tape. You can use the masking tape or your invisible tape, whatever you have. Uh, some people actually just take like a piece of construction paper and they'll glue it around. We're going to use tape just for this video. Um, some people actually put like um, some yarn around and then have that dangling as well. Um, I'm going to leave those options up to you. There's a lot of different things you can do with these rain sticks as far as decorating them and such. So there you go. You have that in there, which is awesome. That one's done. Now you have your second one, but we're not going to put that on there yet because we have to put something inside.